Hi, I'm Jay, and today I'm going to show you how to blow out your in-ground sprinkler system for the winter. Now, I can only show you what I have. Your house may be set up differently, but the steps are generally the same. The way you interface the air to your system may be different. Your sprinkler timer will likely be different than I have. Like I said, I can only show you what I have, but again, the steps will be the same. Now, before you go ahead and blow this out, a couple things you need to know. First of all, you're going to need an air compressor. How big depends on how long you want to wait, and also how big your property is, and how many zones you have. You can easily knock this out in an hour or two, maybe three, on a Saturday afternoon. My recommendation is do this early. In other words, do it when you have one of those last good days of the year when it's still kind of nice and warm out because otherwise you're going to end up getting wet and it's going to be cloudy and you're just going to end up being miserable by the end of it. Before we go ahead and get started with blowing all of this out, I like to test the system first. So let's do that. reason you want to do that is so you know if there are any problem zones or problem heads that you have uh, going into it for next year. So that way you can address those problems before they happen and pop up at the worst possible time. Let's get started. So here is my sprinkler timer. Everything is ready to go as it is. I have seven zones. The eighth zone is off. You'll also notice zone five is off. And that's because I really don't use that zone anymore. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to test this on this one. I can move those sliders up to the two minute mark just so we get some water through each zone and make it not take a lot of time. So I'm going to move those up to two and then I simply press manual and enter. And water is flowing so let's go outside. Okay starting in the uh, bushes here I have two heads I can definitely hear them both. There's some water coming through. They're definitely good on that. This one is spraying as well. I can hear it. And I also have a drip irrigator, which looks like it might be overshooting the plant, but that's easily solvable. Not a problem with that. In this corner, there is a head somewhere there that's spraying. And over here is one that's definitely spraying out as well. Over here, we have a head. That's doing fine. One there and one in the corner. So zone one is working properly. There we go. Got a head there, a head there, and a head by the curb. You can see it by the car right there. It's coming around right now, hitting right over here. So that's all working properly on zone two. I also want to just mention my heads are all old and broken down and not working properly. This one is leaking, as you see, pretty bad. All these heads need to be replaced, but they're, the water's just not going exactly where I want it, but it's still going where it should. Zone three, got a head here, and a head there, but I seem to remember there was another one somewhere in this neck of the woods that doesn't seem to have popped up. Like I said, all these heads are old. So what I'm gonna do is just step on this and mash it into the ground. And look at that, magically another head. The reason, like I said, this is happening, all these heads are old, they're getting sticky, they're not, they're leaking, they're doing all kinds of stuff like that that's not great. They all need to be replaced. I'm well aware of that, but this way I know that we have problems here, and I know in the backyard I got problems as well. But let's carry on through the rest of the zones. And like I said before, it's a very nice day out. It's almost 70 degrees. This is one of the last days that we're going to have this year. So we're all set. I also notice this head sticking up there, but no water squirting out. So that head is stuck up. You can just step on it, it'll snap back down. And in fact, it just came up right now. So that's now spraying water, as is this one here. And over here, yes, there definitely is water coming out. 
So like I said, these heads are old, but they're getting the job done just barely. This one back on zone one has a tendency to stick also. There we go. But that's not gonna be a problem in a minute. And zone five, we got a head here, a head here, which I might be able to just squeeze past, not bad. And one here. Like I said, this zone I don't really use much anymore. There's all kinds of grass and dirt and all kinds of, I take care of that in the spring. Five is working. And zone six, we have a head there. There's one over here. And one right over there, just past the pole, right there. So zone six is working properly. Okay, zone seven. I know there are problems with this zone here. We got a head here that popped up. This one usually is a problem, but it popped. We have a head over here, also usually a problem, but it popped. How do I know this one is definitely a problem? See how brown the lawn is over here? Yeah, the other heads don't hit it. So this zone has been problematic, but it seems to be working for now. And there is one more over here, which also is working right there so we have some sticky heads some stick up some stick down it just is like i said these are all old couple that with the fact that i really don't have that great water pressure here and you end up with this all these heads need to be replaced like i said but that'll be done hopefully soon enough maybe in the spring let's go ahead and talk about blowing it out Okay, with the testing complete, we now know what heads are going to be problematic in the spring, which for me is probably going to be all of them, but hopefully you'll have better luck. <laughs> you need to go to your main water supply in your house. Here's mine right here. There is a valve, and there is also a little petcock on that. We need to shut this valve. No more water can now go to the sprinklers. The next thing we need to do is put a bucket under that and loosen that little petcock and drain that out. But before I do that, I'm gonna come in the bushes right over here where everything is and open this valve. This is for the sprinklers. This was originally on the house, you know, for the hose, which it still is. That's all fine and good. Open this valve. We've shut the water so there might be just a little bit. There you are. Open that up all the, all the way. So it's now draining out whatever it's got right there. But it'll now allow air in and back into the house to drain from the petcock. And you might just barely be able to hear that draining out. So just let that drain out good. And of course, make sure you tighten the petcock back down so this way water won't spray in the house. We've gotten most of it out, it should be fine. Anything that's in the pipe is in the house where it's not gonna freeze, so we're okay. But just make sure that's nice and closed. We are now getting ready to administer air to the system and you need a way to adapt the hose from your air compressor. Mine are sitting out in the sun to make it more pliable. You need some sort of adapter. Now these are nowadays available online. You can buy them for a few bucks. They're not too bad, but you're not gonna find it like this. I made this myself and uh, I like the fact that it's on a hose because it just gives you that little extra reach and makes it a lot easier. So that's number one. Number two is the fact that I have full flow through this barring the size of these fittings, which is what the air compressor uses. The other ones may or may not. This is really easy to make. I'm going to leave a link in the video description uh, in a video showing how I made this adapter piece. I strongly suggest that you make your own. Some other tools that you may wish to have that are really just going to make the job that much easier is something like this here. And what I have here actually are two pieces. One is an inline shutoff valve with the red handle there. And what that'll allow us to do is turn the supply of air on and off. And over here is a pressure regulator 
you can dial it down if you want. My air compressor puts out, I think, about 125 PSI or so. Um, there's different schools of thought as far as what kind of pressure you want to put through the system. There's going to be some people that are going to tell you, never go more than 30. Your water pressure isn't higher than that. And there's other people that have Niagara Falls coming out of their faucets, so clearly the piping and everything can handle it. My gut feeling here is give it all that you got because you are dealing with a much smaller air compressor than your average sprinkler company, but you're still going to get the job done. So give it all the pressure it's got. The main thing you need to remember is to open that valve very slowly so as not to just give it a full, you know, force of air just like that. And the reason the pressure regulator is here, even though I'm going to have it cranked all the way up, is just so I can see the pressure in the tank so I know when it's full again without having to run back to the compressor. Again, it just makes the job that much easier. These I have on quick disconnects, as you see right here, if I can disconnect it, like that. So I can use either or, but I'm going to use both for this. Now let's touch upon the physics. That was the class we took in school that a lot of us flunked out of. The reason why you want to do this and why it works in that. One thing that pretty much we can universally say is a lot of people know that when water freezes, it expands. And you've heard all kinds of horror stories of people whose power went out and uh, during the winter and their pipes froze and flooded the house or something. You know, how does that happen? Well, the reason why is because you have city water pressure or your pump system, whatever you have, coming in on one side. At the other end is your faucet, which is off. So that water is A, under pressure, and B, has nowhere to go because the faucet is off. So now if that starts to freeze, there's only one way all the water within this pipe, we'll make believe this is a pipe, can go. And the way it can go is out. Yes, it will burst the pipes or hoses or whatever you have. It needs to expand, and if it doesn't have anywhere to do so, that's when you get burst pipes in that. In this case, being that this is a sprinkler system, and the heads themselves don't actually cap off, there is room for expansion, but it's still good practice to do this regardless. What you want to do is try to do the very best job that you can. It does not have to be perfect, but, you know, try your best either which way. The reason I say that is, if you look at that, see the hole there? So that's going to be roughly, well, not quite, but roughly the diameter of this hose on the inside. If that is filled from water, filled with water from top to bottom, then that means this entire hose is filled, and if everything were perfectly sealed, if it were to freeze, it has to go out, and it will burst that. And in this case, we're dealing with pipes underground. What if, on the other hand, it were half full, and you only have water up to the halfway mark? Well, it's got the entire rest of the half to expand before there's going to be any trouble, now, obviously, you're going to do a much better job than that. There's always going to be some residual, but that's okay. There's just going to be a few little drippy drops along the length of the pipe, just really that much. So it really won't be a problem. And that's why you want to blow these out, because just in case, you never do know. And to avoid any potential problems like that, you blow it out. So now, like I said, you're going to need an air compressor. Here, I have a 15-gallon air compressor that is hooked up to a 7-gallon auxiliary tank for a total of 22 gallons, and I have 7 zones that I'm going to blow out. This takes me approximately an hour and a half or so to do between all the refilling of the tank. In between, I blow each zone out twice. You can get away with a smaller compressor. I've seen videos of it and you can, you're going to be there all afternoon. It will get the job done, so you don't need to go out and buy a big compressor, but the bigger the one you have, the faster and better this job is going to go. So I'm going to get the compressor all charged up with air, and I'll show you how the hoses connect, and we'll get going. There is the valve from before. I've connected my adapter piece to that. 
runs over here and goes into this little extension hose over here which is going to run that over conveniently to the railing right here which makes it super easy to control it's fine sitting on top of a bush or anything like that just got to get the air hose hooked up to it and then we can get started so we're building some pressure here but this valve is off so we're not administering any air just yet that's important because we haven't turned any of the zones on for the sprinkler two ways you can do that one is to go into these green boxes you may have one or multiple ones and you'll see the valves there and the top black part of it you can actually unscrew maybe a quarter to a half a turn sometimes even a full turn depending on the valve and that will open that particular zone up at which point you can administer air in my case I'm going to do it through the actual sprinkler timer I find that to be a better solution all around because if you forget to tighten one of these down or it starts leaking on you in the spring then what so let's go now down to the timer and turn on zone one okay so we need to now turn zone one on on mine it's real nice because I just got this thing called manual on I just do that and zone one is on I'm also going to take not this white thing but this thing out it will come into play later okay we're ready to go zone one is on so we're now going to turn this valve on and administer air remember the main thing you need to know is do not turn this on fully right away make sure you do it slow so we'll go ahead it turns this way See how slow I'm going like that? And the sprinklers have water blowing out and air. You can hear it come down the line. I don't know if you can see right in there. There's still some mist in that. Coming over here, still a lot of water yet, so it's not blown out yet. You gotta, it's gonna take a little time. Starting to get a little air out of that coming back this way there's the mist that we want you can see this best on days where it's sunny you can see all that mist you want to get rid of as much of this mist as you can because that wall is going to settle in the pipe and possibly freeze and potentially cause a problem how long do you leave this run for uh, until you don't see any more water come out really I hit each zone twice. Now what's going to happen eventually, you can hear the compressor running in the background. We're going to run out of air. That's okay. Whatever heads can pop down, that one is a problem, as we know, will pop down. But everything is still going well over here, so we're just going to wait. We still see little drops here and there. So we'll just leave it, let it go for a bit. And it seems to be dying down right about now. Coming back this way, we'll check back on these heads. Little wisps of moisture. That one's mostly air. These are mostly air because they're first on the zone. So I think that's pretty good. Now we can shut it off. And now, I'm going to let the compressor recharge back until it shuts off. Okay, zone one, second blast. Again, turn it on slow. And the head is coming up. You may not get all your heads to rise again because we've gotten most of the water out. I'm hearing pretty much air. couple little drops here and there. Everything's going just fine. That popped up. Maybe you could still see a little bit of mist there. That's why I like to hit these zones twice. Just in the event there's going to be any problem. This particular one is at the end of the line and maybe you can see there's still water in there. So we want to let that run if you want to go for a third go, you can go right ahead, that's perfectly fine. But I think after two, I've gotten most of the most of the water out. 
and that's perfectly all right with me. Once this kind of dies down, we're going to shut the air, switch to the second zone, let the compressor refill, of course, and move on to zone two. All right, we're done with zone one, all the way down to manual off. Zone two, manual on. And now we go back outside. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. What did I tell you? Slow. And there we go. Open that up fully. We have three heads here. That's good. That's getting some air. And that is as well. Some people are going to say, oh, this isn't good for these heads. Look how fast it's turning. It's not designed for that. It's not designed for that kind of pressure. I've been blowing these out for, I think, about 16 or 17 years at this point. And besides the fact that they've gotten old, none of them have ever broken. We're starting to lose some pressure. That's why it popped down. That one already has. And that one over there, not just yet, but we're coming down to the end of the line on this zone as far as the amount of air I have. So it's a good time right now to go ahead and shut this off. And let the compressor recover. Zone 2, second blast. There we go. Heads may or may not pop up. They have, see that? Just a little tiny, tiny bit. We'll just let another tank of air run through that. And zone two is done. And then on to zone three. Okay, zone three, first blast. Turn it on slow. Should have a head right here. Spraying me, in fact. Yep. That's okay. And the other one here and the other one have popped up. So everything's good. We're getting all of the water out. A lot of mist going now, which is good. And we're going to let that run through. That one's looking pretty good. This one here, not quite there yet. So we'll let it go for a while. Tank of air go through that. And then I'll shut that and we'll blast it a second time. Zone 3, second blast. Once again, turn it on slow. And Phil is trying to get me, but that's okay. Like I said, the other heads may or may not pop up. That one we had trouble with earlier, but this one didn't pop either. Because we don't have a head of water ahead of the air, so the air just rushes right out. That's okay. We'll let that go for a little bit. Get as much water as we can out of there, shut that off, and go to the next zone. Incidentally, of course, I can run inside and go down to the basement and switch it, but I got a helper, it makes the job a lot easier. Okay, zone four. Remember, slow. And there we go. And there it is. Very nice. Still all water here. No real air. The zone only has these two heads on it. There we go. And it looks like that one is starting to get some air also. So, like I said, Get as much mist out as you can. You don't have to go absolutely crazy, but try your best. If you get a sound like that, nothing to worry about. Those are just the sprinkler angels singing the praises of saving money by not calling your sprinkler guy. Sometimes they just make noise. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Time for zone four, second blast. Turn it on slow. Let's see if we get anything. Yeah, it popped up over here. And down there. And see, there's just a little, little bit. 
so let that just run for another minute or so so we don't see much at all and then we can go on to the next zone okay zone five first blast turn that on slow there we go and let's head over here yep we got water here and water there and water there Put the air there. Maybe at the end. This one has got air now. So that's got a lot of water to work out just yet. But it's getting better and better. Just let it go for a while, shut her down, and pump another tank through it. Five second blast. Open it slow. And coming down over here. I think we're in good, good order. This is the last one on the zone, I know. Almost nothing out of that. Don't worry when you see that, the grass kind of like soaks up the water and the air is just making it do that. It's got nowhere it can go. Yeah, this zone's good. Nothing more here. Shut her down, go to zone six. Okay, zone six, which is in the backyard. Turn it on slow. Let's go to the backyard. Just in time for the air. Looking good, getting rid of the water. Same over there. Still got water, but it's getting there, so we're good. Let these go for a little bit. This is a longer run because it's in the backyard. You may wish to hit the longer runs a third time, however much you're comfortable with. Like I said, you can't get every last drop just do the best you can. Zone six, blast two. Almost no water coming out. That's a good thing. Here in just air. Still a little couple drippy drops coming out of there. And here this one's still got a bit. Like I said, the longer zones you may wish to do an extra time. I used to do it a third time, it, it never did anything. You can't get all of it, just do the best you can. Alright, on to zone seven. Okay, zone seven, first blast. Just go slow. Alright, we're seeing good things. We still got a lot of water here. Air. Now we got a little air. That's good. That one's almost empty. Still got a lot of water in that one. That one, and then that one is the very end of the zone, I know for a fact. So they're going to need some time. And one more, which is over here. Just a couple little drops here and there. We'll let this one go for a bit and hit it for a second blast. Zone 7, last blast. Nice and slow. Didn't pop the head up, but that's okay. Got just whatever it's got. Somewhere here, no water to speak of. Just bubbling over here, which is okay. Like I said, that's the water just sitting on top of it. And over here, this one is up. It's either due to the pressure or it's just stuck. Just like I said, these are old. Yep, it's just stuck. Quite all right. No problem at all. And now let's go ahead and close up the sprinklers. But keep watching because we got more to go. Okay, I've taken the air hose off. We'll go ahead and close this valve over here 
this just takes an inordinate amount of turns to close there we go and I have this valve here also just shut that off just for completeness makes no difference if you leave it open or closed well, let's go back inside okay back inside we'll shut off zone 7 all right and now you can turn your main dial to off this one looks like I could just go one click that way but it doesn't work that way I gotta go all the way around there we go I'm gonna reset this how it was so I don't forget in the spring okay that's all reset so we're ready to go for the spring so we're all done with that close that up but the job's not over first thing you need to know it's plugged in in that electrical box right up there leave your sprinkler timer plugged in year round the reason why it's got a program in it and you wouldn't want to have to reprogram that in the spring as long as you don't lose power you're okay it should have a backup battery this one does I had forgotten about it it went dead and then we did lose power and I lost the program so you might want to check the battery in this one it's in this panel down here but you can do that if you want even replace it yearly if you want but leave it plugged in because that way at least you have half a shot at it while we have the compressed air out 94.87233333 repeating percent of garden hose failures occur over the winter while you have the compressed air out it would be a great idea to blow out your garden hose if you say oh well I kind of use it over the winter hey I got something that will solve your problem due to the way this hose is configured in that I need to connect these ends together but you'll notice that nature didn't make them to connect like that and that's that little green bag that we had before in there is an adapter and we're gonna go ahead and screw that in on this end and screw it together over here all right just like that so now that that's together we have our air coming in this way and we can blow out the other end of the hose now in the backyard the black hose on the left is from the front yard and this purple hose is from the back but you'll notice those are both male connectors they don't go together but fortunately there's an adapter and this one is even easier to get it's a simple washing machine fill hose connect those together and now I can blow the front out and the back out at the same time that purple hose goes through a splitter and comes down over here to this green hose which is used to put water in the pool so now with all of the hoses connected together we can blow this out but hold on to this really good because this is going to act like a fire hose once all the water is expelled so let's go ahead and turn it on So as you see, there's still a lot of water here that's going to come out of it. We'll let that go again, and then I'll blast it a second time, just like we've done with everything else, and get as much water as possible out. But we're still not done. Yeah, I keep everything around here until it's completely used up. But hey, they still work. And one of the reasons why they still work is I take them inside for the winter. Put them in your shed, in your garage, anything, whatever works for you is just fine. Just keep them out of the winter. Did you go absolutely crazy power washing practically everything this summer like I did? Well, 
One thing you may not know is that 95.897% of pressure washer failures occur due to freezing in the winter. So it's a very good idea to blow that out as well. Here's the adapter that we had before. But again, we have that age-old problem where that doesn't work. So once again, we get our handy-dandy adapter. So squeeze the handle on your lance and now turn your air on again do it slowly and make sure that's not pointing at anybody you may get some out you may not hey look at that that could have frozen and done damage not a good thing blow that out too And that looks very good right there. So there you go. Probably the most complete job you've ever seen. And I'll guarantee you this, your sprinkler guy will never go to the extent that I do. I always make sure to do a very thorough job with everything. Same with blowing out your garden hose for the winter. And if you say, oh, well, I use a hose, you know, over the winter, Although I'm not one to really recommend poor quality products, they have those pocket hoses, those real flexible ones you can kind of throw into a ball in that. They're not great, but I will tell you, if all you do is, you know, rinse the car off every few days or once a week or something in the winter, it'll work great for that. Just make sure you always disconnect it when you're done and throw it back in the garage or shed or whatever you got and that problem is solved. All set with that, your garden hose is blown out so that won't break, your sprinkler system is blown out so that won't break, and your pressure washer is blown out so that won't break either. I can also guarantee you that doing it yourself will save you a fortune in the money that you would have paid for your sprinkler guy who wouldn't do half the job that I did. If this video helped you out and you found it to be entertaining as well as informative, please go ahead and click on that like button as well as the subscribe button. If you would also please click on the thanks button below the video, that really helps me out and also helps out the channel. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it and have a great day.